Hey everyone, Profit here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to not be focusing on Phil Burnell. Instead, we are going to be focusing on debunking Eric Miller, a detractor turned lol cow. Now, over the past couple months, there have been a lot of grumblings within the community. Uh, basically, Miller stabbed a bunch of detractors in the back, and his true colors shone through. Now, personally, I did not want to get involved in the situation. I took the same thinking as Agent Proper, that I was just going to sit back and laugh and watch it just fizzle out. But after Miller basically went off on a tirade, attacking every detractor out there, uh, clips channels, restreamers, etc., etc., and then leveling racial slurs towards detractors, calling detractors rapists, house stationaries, etc., etc., I could no longer stand by and watch this happen. So I contacted Miller. So this video is going to be focusing on my interactions with Miller and all the information I found. So without further ado, welcome to Fake Pastor, Rise of a Lolcat. So I've been a member of Miller's channel up until about five months ago, and you'll see why here shortly. Now, Miller states that he doesn't know me, but again, like I've been a member of his channel for quite some time. And actually going back to last year, I had tried to help Miller when he got a Chinese knockoff web camera that didn't work. Uh, he must forget that, right? And I offered him assistance getting the drivers and everything, getting it up and running, and he refused my help. So, and shout out to Lugwood for reminding me about that too. And so back in August, Alt made a post on Discord to help Miller push above 1,000 subscribers, to help him boost and get to his monetization. Because remember, before Miller joined the Detractor community, his channel was failing. It wasn't very large he got monetized on the back of detractors now we'll take a look at a video here this is my interaction with miller we're going to look at the email saga all the emails that i've gone through with miller here as well as go over my take on why this occurred and we'll go from there and i need to him to say it it doesn't matter what everybody else finds. It, it matters that he said it and whether people want to overlook him or not, because here's Profit Gaming. I'm going to defend duty for a second. Here's Profit Gaming. Because um, he said, I've been a proponent, I mean, a, a, an opponent of, 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 of duty streams with clickbaity stuff and that a third. I said, yeah, that, that's great. But, you know, um, I ain't heard you. I ain't heard of you before. Like at all. And whether you want to discount him or not, he is a big gun. I'm not, I'm not going to sit up and tell you he's not. So basically, he states that he's never heard of me. And again, I've helped him out, monetize his channel. Uh, I was a member of his channel, and I tried to help him fix a web camera, and he just shot me down. So let's look at the email saga here. Now, I had sent this email twice to both Duty and Miller. Uh, neither one of them had responded to me. And... Basically, I had my talking points. Now, as for duties questions, these were all answered on the King Sly uh, podcast that I was on with Duty and Ravensdolph. And shout out to those two, man, because those are awesome detractors. Duty is an awesome guy, right? And I'm not the only one that critiques Duty on his style of detracting. Uh, others have as well, right? I'm not the only one. And after sitting down and talking with Duty, Duty is a great guy. OK, and if anybody ever needs help with like research on doing a video, always talk to the community. Everybody is willing to help you, regardless of what Miller says, because Miller's full of fucking shit. That 
we will help each other out. Like if, if, if you have pro troubles finding a video or a clip, everybody's there. And like I've stated before, clip channels are the foundation of our community. Otherwise, we would have to give that information. We would have to give Phil that view, right? And that in turn gives revenue to Phil. With the clip channels, they'll take that initial hit and then we can use their clips to debunk Phil, right? So they're the foundation of our community. Miller never saw that, right? Miller just thought these guys are making tons of money and he could do the same thing, right? We'll get into the monetization side here in a little bit. So the second email I sent to Miller, because I knew Miller wasn't going to talk to anybody, right? Because he always stated that he wanted a name and a face. So I wasn't afraid, right? I'm not afraid of Miller, right? He doesn't scare me. He's all talk. So, of course, yes, people already know my name is Gerald. I go by Jerry. And there is that handsome prophet, me, right there, at work. Now, after that, Miller finally sent me this email. Now, this is after he had already done the live stream, where he was basically going over my first initial email that I had sent there which is gold because Miller gave up a lot of information that I could then use to go and do background checks. Now, Miller likes to state that it is illegal, that it is, you know, running the Brunel playbook, that it's identity theft. It's not identity theft, Miller. You willingly gave me the information of your ordination, where it took place, what your church was called, the convention you attended in Beaumont, that's all publicly available, Miller, right? I could then use that information to contact the Baptist ministries of said states and see if you actually are a pastor, right? And we'll get into that. So, of course, Miller sent me this. There is no debate. He needs to do what you did with two receipts, right? Basically, what Miller was trying to do is he was trying to extort duty, right? Into doing what he wanted. Right. Let it be threatening him with a fake lawsuit to try to get money out of him or to bend to his will. Right. Everybody agrees that Miller is a massive narcissist and a massive sociopath. I got a favor to ask of you. The then he sends me this. When are you thinking? Right. It would be awesome sauce. So I sent him back. The sooner the better. Right now. This is prior to the King Sly stream that I was still trying to get Duty and Miller to come on and talk with us and just go over what we wanted to do, right? And like I stated, like, again, Miller at this point was already attacking Aqua Teal, Snort Hogan, Chill Murray, Duty, right? Like, for whatever reason. And I had actually gone ahead and spoken to all of these detractors except for Snort Hogan I wasn't able to get a hold of at the time. So Miller sends me back this shit, right? So as you can see, he gets more confrontational as this goes on. And you'll see that. You'll, you'll see his language just completely shifts. Now, he wants the evidence to clear his name, and we'll actually provide that evidence here shortly as well. So, he calls the bad apples, Snort Hogan, King Sly, Agent Proper, Chill Murray, Aqua Teal. I don't know why he involved Agent Proper in this, because after speaking with Agent Proper, Agent Proper had no clue. Like, Proper is an awesome detractor. He's a community leader for us. And he basically stated that he just stands back and laughs, right? That's usually his take on everything. So, he has no clue why Miller would name him in this, right? And, of course, this list grows over time, right? As everybody starts emailing or somebody fake emails pretending to be somebody else and then Miller then attacks them because the guy doesn't do any research, right? He doesn't understand that there are some people out there that are just going to troll him. And they did, and Miller got caught a lot. So then... I started looking into everything because after the video, he had already given me all this information that I needed to do the background checks. Now, with the entrapment thing, it's yes and no, and we'll get into that more. Now, again, I've spoken to everybody that had to, anything to do with Miller, right? And 
they had all confirmed, most of them, right? The only one I didn't speak with was Snort Hogan, but everybody stated that they felt the issue had to deal with Amaranth. And the situation with that Twitch live stream that she did where her and her husband got into a massive fight. Now, there's a lot of conspiracy behind that video that Amaranth had done. My stance was I'm going to sit back and I'm just going to see how it plays out. Miller got pissed off that people weren't supporting Amaranth. Now, the problem is, is that with Miller, I'm not going to get into the sexualized content that he follows on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or YouTube. Um, it is very questionable. I know Duty has a bunch of videos on it and Decepticon is going to cover it as well in his video that's upcoming. Uh, shout out to Decepticon because he gave me massive help with my video here. Uh, him and I had spoken a lot over this whole entire situation, bouncing ideas off each other just for our own videos and everything like that. And he is an awesome, awesome content creator and he has given me a lot of help here. So, the Amaranth situation played out because her and her husband had got into a massive fight on stream. Now, the problem around that is Keemstar basically refused to support Amaranth. Miller took offense to it. The detractors basically just said, we're not getting involved. Miller wanted everybody to get involved. I do not think that is what the issue was. And I'll show that shortly when we get to the end of this little slideshow. Um, again, Miller, if you look at his Instagram and stuff like that, it does get pretty disgusting of the stuff he follows. And again, a pastor wouldn't be following things like that, like that publicly, that's available on their Facebook or their Instagram account. So basically... Miller says, Sissy fights racial slurs and you believe a bold-faced lie for the sake of information? This isn't a bold-faced lie. It's not misinformation. As you can see right here. And we'll get into that here as well. Now... Miller's language gets really off the hook. And you can see, right? Like, fuck off, stuff like that, right? Again, is a pastor really going to be doing something like that, right? Fuck is your malfunction, dog, right? Like, constant use of profanity. Like, and I don't mind saying, like, fuck or shit or asshole or whatever on my streams. That's what I do. But when you're attacking people like that right racial slurs constantly and we're gonna have a clip of many many racial slurs that he does again is that something a pastor really does but i stayed professional right i kept asking him let's do a one-on-one -on -one, right let's talk about the immorality insulting detractors either by racism hate speech or whatever right a detractor stealing money Right, Phil unable to fight back. Phil can fight back. He just doesn't want to. Detractors are scammers. Mediation over your attacks on detractors. Kiss your ass and suck dick, which Miller has said many times in his videos. Not allowed to talk about Cat. We're actually going to get into this, and we're going to show some real fucking damning evidence against Miller on that one. And then I want to go into the Beaumont Convention, the Ordination Confirmation Minister's License, and the church that he started and created next to his high school. That he states, right? This is all this is all in his videos, right? And then go into everything else, right? Transgender and LGP, LG, LTGBQ hate. Uh, constant use of the N-word. Dropping N-bombs. Which really pissed off a lot of the African-American detractors. Uh, his following of sex workers on OnlyFans. Everything like that. Now, Miller, of course, is going to refuse, right, to do anything. He's not... Miller states in his videos that nobody will ask him for a one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody will come face him face-to-face. -face. I did, right? 
I wanted to do that sit down with him. I wanted to talk to him. Wanted to pick his brain. All he's going to do is he's going to throw out Bible quotes that he doesn't know any of the meanings to. So again, somebody in his so-called family congregation had contacted me. And I asked about this, right? That, you know, he was stated that he was ordained in the Savannah Baptist Church in Denver, Colorado. We'll get into that. As you can see, the Savannah Baptist Church never existed in Colorado. The only one I could find was in Oklahoma. And again, we'll look into that later on. Now, of course, he gets really... Everything gets really, really insulting from him now, from now on, on his emails. I stay professional. Miller gets extremely confrontational with me. So again, I send him another thing or whatever investigation since you call us fake detractors, right? Now, that's my right. I can do my investigation. I can do my background checks and everything like that because he's attacking everyone. He's threatening people. We'll actually look at a death threat he sent to duty here shortly. Take it for what you will. There's his response. Who cares, dipshit? Right? Atta like, insulting me or whatever, right? Unprofessional. And after this, he had refused to contact me. So, this is the last one that I had sent Miller. This was done today. Or yesterday, I mean. Just basically going over his ordination status and everything like that because I have been in contact with the Baptist ministries of both Colorado and Texas, and they have confirmed a bunch of stuff that I already assumed. Now, this is where I think the problem really began. Now, this is going back, oh, this is now six months, I want to say, six, seven months. This is when Superhound was attacking all the channels, right? All the clip channels and some other detractor channels and taking them down. Now, the problem with this is that a lot of people decided to move over to Odyssey to back up their channel so they didn't lose any of their content. Miller, when he found out Soma Julius Cruz was moving over, his first inkling was, is it worth it? The other platform is their monetization. Now, this is what I feel Miller was after the entire time was money and you'll see that later on when we start going through his merch store like he was literally selling merchandise on Phil and Catherine Burnell targeting them right I have never seen and I could be wrong I haven't seen a person I've never seen a detractor sell merchandise with Phil's face on it or Phil's moniker or anything like that. I've never seen that. Miller did it. Making money off of Phil. And then he accuses detractors of making money on their channels when he was doing it even worse. But that's the thing that it comes down to. For Miller, it was all about how much money can he make in the detractor community? Because he's probably been on live streams prior to being a detractor himself and seeing people get super chatted or whatever, right? Or donations sent to their channels. We'll get into monetization. But this is all that Miller was after. He was after clout and he was after money. So moving on to the detractor slander that he's levied at a lot of people. What you see on your screen now is the death threat that he sent to duty. This is basically going back to November when Miller had actually tipped Phil. Now, this is the evidence that Miller basically wanted, but he already knew, right? Miller already knew that he had tipped Phil. Now, like I said previously, duty made the video. The video was incorrect and piece of piece debunked it. Right, using the channel ID to prove that it wasn't Miller. That was just a couple months ago. This, though, goes back to November when Miller had actually stated that he did tip Phil. Now, his whole thing about tipping Phil was to get Phil into a lawsuit. And we'll get into the lawsuit later and why it would never fly. Now, I had asked Duty because Duty had stated that Miller had given him death threats. And Duty has allowed me to use this email. This email was sent on January 16, 2023. 
where Miller basically stated, Duty, you seriously want to play games with me? You better pray I never find out who your punk ass... Well, who your punk bitch name is or address. I will bury you in a hole and no one will ever find you. Believe that. Now again, this is coming from a pastor. Okay? So now we're going to take a look at a video of the slander that he levels at the detractors and accusing us of making money off of Phil. That would be like in this situation. So um, he opened his mouth, ran his mouth. So I was like, you know, at that first time I let it go in the email. But this time when he run to show his whole his whole ass, and then I realized what his whole agenda was. I got to show it. I got to show you what his real agenda is. His real agenda was don't quit talking about us, man. Let us make our money. We It's OK for us to make these things. Even if they're immoral and they fall under cyberbullying. Yes. So I have to make a gripe over something that you shouldn't be doing anyway as a human being. More facts. Why don't people admit Phil made them relevant? Phil gave them all careers. Outside of Phil, <laughs> can any of these content creators make anything but but Phil? Without Phil, no one cares about their content. No one is holding Phil accountable by making videos. No one can. The new modern detractors are just using him for clout. That is just a fact. What did you just say? I can't tell the truth in here. What are you talking about, dog? Last time I checked, the truth should be welcome everywhere. Well, no, we're dealing with Philip. It's all about making fun of him because, you know, he pays our bills. Oh, y'all are hoes. Got it. They're not holding him accountable to where they stop that stuff from happening. They're continuing the cycle. You know it and I know it. We're making attractive videos. No, that's just a scam. These guys are legit scammers. They're not detractors. They are absolute scammers. Because I am not, I'm one that actually likes the truth. The rest of them bitches want lies. I don't expect my position to be to be, be shown out. That, that actually is the reason why I'm saying something. Because nobody else is willing to say anything. They're too much of a damn coward. I don't run with cowards. I don't hold my tongue when something ain't cool. If it ain't right, I'm gonna speak up. I'm not like them. I'm not soft. I ain't weak. I'm not gonna just, we're gonna just go with the flow and keep getting the money. Fuck all of y'all, for real. So that's where you understand where Miller's coming from, right? Miller's all about money, money, money. Now, we're gonna take a look at some detractor channels. We'll start with mine. As you can see, I'm not monetized. I do not make money off of Phil. I have a donations link on my page that brings to my PayPal people want to donate. I do not plug it. I just don't. Once in a while, I'll put it in the description of my videos or on my live stream. If people want to donate, they can, but I don't push it, right? Miller, on the other hand, will beg for money. We'll beg for support. We'll beg for people to donate to the fake lawsuit that he'll just run away with the money from. But we'll talk about that later. I'm not monetized. So I don't make money on Phil. The great piece of peace can monetize, but he chooses not to. Piece of peace, on the other hand, if you want to donate, peace offers a uh, donations to the best friends animal society jasper's angels is what peace calls his charity to date we have raised thirteen thousand eight hundred and four dollars and forty seven cents peace doesn't make any money off of his channel peace runs a fundraiser which is fucking awesome i've donated to this tons of times as to a great cause Let's take a look at another one. Hey fam, it's your girl Samantha. I got a favor to ask of you. Ann Lee. The sinner's commentary is a labor of love from Eric. All his DSP stuff is demonetized. He does not monetize DSP. All his gameplay videos, he does. And that's Ann's prerogative. Ann actually did one of the best things to ever be done in the detractor community, which was to 
join Twitch, start a gaming channel, and get partnered, which he did. And that just pisses Phil right off. And doesn't make money on Phil content. And makes money on his gaming content, which is awesome, and I'm all for it. Now, if a detractor wants to monetize their channel, Miller's monetized. Miller's channel is monetized, okay? If you go on his live streams, let's go to a live stream. I've donated to Miller's live stream. The problem right now is Miller, even if though he's now dropped below a thousand subs, like he's now down to 670 subs, because he's disabled comments so that nobody can critique him, you can't do uh, a super thanks. But on a live stream, yes, you can tip him, you can give him a super chat, you can give him a super sticker and whatnot. Now, Miller, on the other hand, also has a merch store. This is Miller's merch store, okay? He now only has two items listed on his store. Prior to this, when I had leaked the information that Miller was selling DSP merchandise, he nuked the store. That's why there's only two items now. But I was able to clip everything. This is a shirt Miller sold on his store. UNHD TV store, right? DSP don't pay, cat don't stay. Now remember, Miller said that we're not allowed to talk about Phil's wife, Catherine Burnell. Miller, on the other hand, was selling a wife beater shirt for twenty-five twenty-nine Canadian. That basically says DSP don't pay, Catherine don't stay. Right? Not only that, he was also selling a t-shirt with the exact same thing and socks. Imagine selling merchandise with DSP on it. You're not Phil Brunel. You're not Catherine Brunel. Yet, you are selling merchandise that targets those individuals. And then you turn around and you accuse detractors of making money, like making it rich, like we make bank or whatnot, when you yourself have a merch store targeting DSP. I have never, like, and I could be wrong, but I have never seen a detractor that has a merch store aimed at Phil. Like, that is... That's got to be illegal in some way because you're monetizing, you're making money off of Phil's likeness, right? Like if he had Phil's picture on there, I would say Phil would have a grounds for a lawsuit, right? But this is what Miller likes to do, right? Miller will enter a community and we'll see that here shortly just to destroy it because he's a fucking sociopath. But again, he was selling merchandise until he was called out a couple weeks ago. I leaked that information and Miller immediately nuked his store that it was on a Friday afternoon. He immediately started deleting everything on his store and now all he has is two mugs. Right? I really hope nobody got scammed or bought any of those items. Like, truly. Because, damn, like that is just, that's just disgusting. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at the racism, the homophobic slurs, and his claim of immorals, which we'll look at first. Now, Miller claims that all of us detractors are immoral, and he has a clip where he reads it about us and accuses us of being immoral, we're going to take a look at that first. Fine, totally okay with that. But we're going to go by the ethos of what society goes by and read what is morals 
unmoral, immoral. You just want to get that basic because they're gonna they're gonna disagree that with anything moral. When it comes to Philip, anything that's moral toward him, what is what you could do right by him, nah. But I'm gonna tell you what they definitely absolutely will do is un not unmoral, immoral things. So when we look at this, uh, all of them have prefixes, right? Okay, so watch this. Unmoral refers to those having no moral perception. It is best used for animals or inanimate objects incapable of considering a moral concern, but can also be used for humans lacking the same. Immoral refers to a conscientious rejection of typical moral standards and has a connotation of evil or wrongdoing. Non-moral describes actions that are not usually subject to moral concerns, such as which shirt to wear. Finally, amoral implies an awareness of moral standards, but a lack of concern for them while acting. That Listen to this part. You talk about you hate divorce, but you are not divorced for cheating on your wife, ex-wife. Yeah, because I'm not giving her a divorce. That's what Christians do. We don't divorce. So right from Miller's mouth, Christians don't divorce, but supposedly it's okay to cheat on your wife. Isn't that a sin, Miller? Like, isn't isn't that breaking a commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. You would think a pastor would follow that, right? And I hate using that word in Miller's present pastor, because he isn't a pastor, and we'll get to that here in the next bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look take a look at Miller's Facebook channel, or channels, because I didn't know he had two. And thanks to Decepticon for figuring it out, we have two channels for Facebook. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at is the one that's listed off his YouTube channel, which is this one here. He lists himself as a Reverend Eric Miller. And Reverend Eric Miller is part of the evangelical community. Now, this was created back in... Oh, was it... So he created this back in May 26th of 2009. Now, when we get to the church area, the Baptist area and everything out of the video, you'll see that Miller has done this many times to many different communities. He states that. He's done it to the Roman Catholic community. He's done it to the evangelical community. He's done it to the Baptist community. So he loves to go into communities just to wreak havoc and try to destroy them. So this channel here was created back in 2009. We'll take a look at some of the ratings here. Uh, I've got pictures of it because I don't want to dox any of these people. Some of these people I've actually contacted as well. They were not willing to give me permission to state their stories and their run-ins with Miller, but let's just say they are very... They're not very legal. Let's just put it that way. So, as you scroll through Miller's, this Facebook account that's listed on the channel, you will start to come across things that are very either racist, homophobic, uh, attacks on certain groups, and that's what Miller does. See, here's that effeminate men thing that he likes to call all the detractors, right? So Miller actually has a second Facebook account. Eric Miller, Reverend Eric, right? Now, this one has a lot more information on it. Uh, he switches back and forth depending on what time of day it is. And... I don't know why he would have two of the same channel. I think one is because he had had so many negative reviews on this one and people calling him a fraud that he created this channel in 2018 to get away from this one. But he's still uploading to this one. He still posts under this one for some reason. Maybe it's just to fuck with the evangelical community. I don't know, right? Like, he just made this post on January 1st, right? And remember, he says he's part of many different communities. So we'll take a look now at some of the pictures that we can find on Miller's Facebook page. 
So here's one where he attacks Black Lives Matter, right? Black men, black babies, lives matter, except to Black Lives Matter, right? Enough said. Like, how close can we get to this, to dealing with Phil, right? Remember Phil's Dead Space 2 playthrough? Remember that? They got him banned from Blip TV. How is this any better? And then, of course, he attacks the LGBTQ community, right? And we actually have one more of the LGBTQ hate. This one was sent to me by Decepticron. So basically, he has it here as, here is more evil. UK House Speaker LGBT rights has to trump religious liberty. Miller calls it evil. World's oldest Methodist chapel to host homosexual celebration. Miller calls it evil, right? But now you're going to say that, you know, Miller's racism. Let's take a look at another video then. What should I stop? Telling the community that doo-doo is a liar, all-around fraud? Those are facts. Snort Hogan and Chill, them two house Negroes, affirm they don't care. He lies. Spread rain and look up. That's all you got to do. Because at this point, you're, you're worthless. Now, here's, here's the house nigga talk. I'm sorry to be so brutal, but I want my brothers out there, every skin, to understand what the house nigga is. So, we got a house nigga that roll up on me. So who they who who is sent to go come ease the beast, so to speak? Now I don't think anybody really sent this dude. Of course I don't trust him as far as I trust the people he runs with. But anytime someone wants to do something, remember I told y'all you, you got to do is wait. All you have to do is wait to find out what kind of human bastard they really are. Well, this house nigga rolled up on me. So basically, he's talking about Chill Murray, Snort Hogan, and King Sly. King Sly was massively offended by that type of language aimed, aimed toward him. Now, Duty, Snort, Chill, and King Sly are all African American. So is Miller. And people are saying, oh, you know, well, they use that towards each other all the time. Okay. I'll call your bluff. Straight from Miller's fucking Facebook. Problem with black folks are women think it's cool to call our men stationary, good or bad. And one more. Black men and black women stop acting like trash and quite being trash. Stop calling your own people stationaries. You are stupid and look stupid when you do. Yet we have Miller in almost every single detractor slander video using end bombs using the stationaries calling people house stationaries do you think that that is correct then do you think miller is a hypocrite right this is coming straight from this is what he's posted he's posted this shit on his own facebook yet he himself will use those terms like it's nothing to insult people, to degrade them, to bring them down. And again, this is a pastor. So let's move on to the actual meat of this video. So what we're going to look at is the big portion that I guarantee a lot of people are here to see. Is Miller actually an ordained pastor, minister, or reverend? Shocker, no he isn't. What we're going to take a look at first is all his claims. Basically, where he was ordained, what his church was called, the Beaumont Convention that he said he attended, and how he's destroyed religious communities. When I got ordained, this is what my pastor showed. He said, look, I'm going to show you the nasty side of preaching. You know, and I don't think I ever shared y'all the Beaumont Convention. <laughs> the Beaumont Convention really jaded me about being a preacher. Behind me, y'all probably can see it. You see that? Oops. 
You see that? See that? Uh, see that right there? That's my certificate. That's January 11th, 2013. That's when I was ordained. Uh, I was under. I was given the. I was given the call under. What? Well, Affirm my call in Denver, Colorado. I got a second confirmation when I was with in New Braunfels, Texas, and got prayed over. Some people, I'm, I'll have to show you that picture. It's really nice. They prayed over me. The, the Southern Baptist prayed over me. Listen to this. So he says, what else did he say? Let's, so a smoke screen. So we realized that's real. And so oh, I'm not a pastor. My church was born that same year. I think it was around when I did my uh, DBA. It was right. I think it was in August of 2013. I think it was August 2013. The registered name was the Powers of Words and Wonders Baptist Church. Uh, it was in it was right across the street from my old high school, right down the street. It was amazing to to kind of think like this whole time I'm circling the area that I'm going to be preaching in. You know, feel in the flesh and what you think is real, and you don't. You guys, I love you enough to tell you this. This isn't the first community I've disrupted. I've disrupted and destroyed some communities because that was in uh, religion, of course, because you'd be surprised what religion does. Well, no, you're not. You're forward thinking people. If you're an atheist like I used to be, y'all know what, what religion can do. Religion can get people killed. Now, imagine a man of the cloth, a man of faith, destroying religious communities. Right? Just think about that, right? Like, really, like... That's who you are. And Miller has already made those claims. The Roman Catholic community, the evangelical community, the Baptist community, right? That's his shtick. He wants to go into the community to destroy it, right? Now, shocker, again, Miller isn't a, isn't a pastor. He isn't ordained or anything. Now, the Beaumont Convention held in Beaumont, Texas, that Miller speaks of. He does a big spiel on that video if you've watched it. Never happened. Now, I contacted the Beaumont Civic Center, okay? The Beaumont Civic Center has no information on anything being held in Beaumont in 2013 for a Baptist convention. Uh, basically, the Beaumont Civic Center, it's similar to how we have it here in Edmonton. We have the Edmonton Event Center, and then we have Northlands. Whenever there's a festival or there's a big gathering, such as a Baptist convention, no matter what they're going to have their hands in it. So the Beaumont Civic Center did a search for me. They found absolutely nothing for any type of Baptist convention held in Beaumont, Texas. Okay? Now, going off of his claims that he was ordained in Colorado in 2013, January 2013, and that his church was created in August of 2013... I decided to contact the Colorado Baptist Association as well as the Texas Baptist Ministries and asked for clarification. I stated that I am doing a bioptic on Eric Miller and I am trying to find confirmation on his claims that he was ordained on such date, his church is this name. They found absolutely nothing. Now, I'll show you the emails here shortly. You can actually search... This is a national search. Of course, no results found. This is a national search site. There's no powers of words and wisdom Baptist church in the United States. Okay? You can do the same thing on here. They have their churches for Colorado. Of course, there is nothing of powers of words and wisdom Baptist church. So I had contacted these associations. I received this email back on Monday. This was last week, I believe. Dear Gerald, I work at the Texas Baptist Historical Collection, a ministry of the BGCT. The BGCT main office sent over your request for information about Pastor Eric L. Miller and the powers of words and wisdom Baptist Church. I have searched our archives and have found no information on Pastor Miller's ordination or the existence of the powers of Wisdom Wisdom Baptist Church within Texas. 
I would be happy to look into our archives to see if I can locate the information through a national search for the information you requested. There are several research requests before, but I will try to get your information in the next three to four weeks. Blessings. Okay. Then, on the 23rd, or sorry, on the 14th, I got this. Dear Gerald, I just searched through our archives to see if I could find anything about Pastor Eric L. Miller or the Powers of Words and Wisdom Baptist Church. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any information on either Pastor Miller or the church. They then asked me if he was registered with the BGCT or the Golden Triangle Baptist Association. You need to be a member of one of the two. Okay, if you're going to be a Baptist minister within the United States. They are now doing a international search, and I am in contact with the Golden Triangle Baptist Association. I have also tried to pull records on permits for the church within Texas and in Colorado. Again, all this is publicly available. There is nothing. The church has never existed. Miller is not an ordained minister, pastor, or reverend, according to any association whatsoever. And it's not difficult for somebody to just go online and download an ordination certificate. You can easily go online and buy one yourself. It doesn't it's not very hard to do. Now, I've been unable to locate the one that Miller says he has, although the quality of image, because Miller is only running like a 480p webcam, I can't tell what that certificate looks like. I've tried searching. I can't find anything on it whatsoever. So, again, I've asked Miller for his ordination status. I've requested it from him. He has refused to give it to me, right? All I asked him for was a high quality picture of the certificate, and then I can take it to the Texas Baptist Ministry or the Colorado Baptist Ministry and get them to confirm if it's real or not. Miller has refused. So at this point, since Texas and Colorado cannot find anything within the continental United States to corroborate Miller's claims, he is not a pastor. Now, what we're going to take a look at next is Miller's lawsuit. Alright, so let's talk about this lawsuit. Okay, now this lawsuit, Miller basically announced it back in November that he was going to sue Phil for gross negligence. Now, he can't sue Phil for gross negligence, all right? Miller willingly tipped Phil knowing what that money was going to be going to, okay? Now, knowing that Phil was going to spend the money on WWE, DoorDash, and Gin, there was no way that this lawsuit would ever flop. Now, there are three instances within Phil's history that people could take Phil to small claims court. And I'll discuss Miller taking Phil to small claims court here in a second. But there are three instances. The first being the Patreon scam that Phil pulled where he was going to do the Project 7 revival when he first moved to Seattle or rented. Phil basically said that if he could reach a $1,000 tip goal on Patreon, a funding goal on Patreon, that he would do a Project 7 revival. Now, when it Phil exceeded that, right? Like he got more money than a thousand bucks. He got close to like 1300, I believe. And what ended up happening is Phil later stated that he couldn't do it. It was logistically impossible. He didn't have the time, but he kept the money. Now him keeping that money would then mean that he, basically he scammed, right? Now they could report him to Patreon and Patreon would either ban his account and return the money, right? So there's nothing really there for people to take Phil to court for. Sure, they could take him to small claims court to recoup like a $5 tip or whatever on Patreon, whatever his Patreon memberships were back then, right? They could take him to small claims court for that, right? But to do so, you're going to be looking at spending, what, like $250, $300 in legal, fee legal court fees to recoup anywhere between 5 and 50 bucks. Like, nobody's going to do that, right? Like, that's that's a waste of money. 
Now, the second one is the Save the Condo stream that Phil did. If people remember that. That's when Phil, you know, he was desperate for money. He was, it was right before his bankruptcy and everything, and he couldn't afford to pay his bills or whatever. And then Phil took that money. But in reality, he was making bank off Twitch at the time, right? Like he was making close to 100K on Twitch. So that was a lie. He didn't need the money to pay his mortgage. They could then report him to YouTube based on the Super Chats or report him to PayPal again to get their money back and to report Phil for fraud, right? The third one is when Phil's parents, Phil stated that he needed to go see his parents. They were sick and dying. When in reality, it was for Phil and Kat to get married, which his parents had already paid for the flights. They paid for the wedding. Everything was already paid for. And Phil stated, oh, well, he kept the money. Well, he did that because he had to protect his wife and everything from the trolls and stuff, right? People were going to show up at the wedding and do nasty shit or something, right? So that's why he said he, he didn't want to divulge he was getting married. So this was all Phil lying. Again, those people that were involved that gave Phil money for those events, for those scams that Phil pulled, they can report Phil, yes. Take him to federal court? Not really. The only the only real issue that it comes to federal crimes for Phil would be him lying on his bankruptcy and lying to the IRS about how much money he was making in his taxes. That's the only real legal issues Phil could have run into or can still run into if it's ever brought back up. So stuff like that is is Phil's legal problems. Miller has now since changed it to wire fraud. Now, again, with wire fraud, it would need to be involved with a bank, which it isn't, right? Miller just thinks because it's electronic, it automatically means wire fraud. No, no, no. It's just, there's, there's a completely different thing. And we have people that are within the legal community, within the detractor community, that have already stated this, right? Like, there's... Phil's a scumbag, yeah? That, that's 100% agreed. Phil's a scumbag. He's a lower form of life. But he's not breaking the law when it comes to what happens on his channel, okay? Yes, it's it's more morally corrupt, right? He, he, he loves to run his scams or whatever. But again, it's not like... It's not like what Miller does with the lawsuit, right? Now, Miller is actually trying to con people into giving money to this lawsuit. So we'll open this up here. So when Miller first announced the bank, the, the lawsuit here, like people gave Miller money, right? And again, Miller said he was he, he isn't monetized, but you got people giving him 50 bucks. You got people giving him five bucks here and there, right? So this is from Mir Miller's channel. Oh, he's almost at 666, guys. He's one away, one away. So this is Miller's Twitter account right here. Okay, this is when he announced on his Twitter, whatever, great news, taking, they call me DSP to court, is now being evaluated by two firms. Okay, now, when I first saw the lawsuit, when I first saw his announcement for the lawsuit, it was suspect, right? Because I'm like, okay, I know it's a con, I know it's a scam, you're not willing to give out the information from the law firms, you're not willing to give information about your lawyer, right? And again, this Helix, the hybrid, ends up contacting Miller, a bit skeptical here if this is legit, right? Miller automatically goes on the offensive, right? Like, doesn't need people's approval, starts attacking people right away, right? Because a lot of us knew right away that this was a con and that there was no way that he was going to take people to court. And I had stated, do not give money to this at all because he's just pulling a fill here, right? Because I, I was already out of this. I, I didn't want to be involved with Miller anymore at this point. So again, like, if it's real, I'm okay giving money. Miller says that he doesn't need money, right? He's gonna, this is all on him. But in reality, he was already crowdfunding before that. Right? Now, we'll bring up some stuff here. Now, this was done just two months ago, so in December. We'll, let's take a listen to what Miller says. I'm sorry about the audio, because Miller's... Miller's setup is really, really poor. He only does it in 720p, and his microphone isn't the best. So, I love you guys very much. Consider getting the membership of the channel. It goes a long way 
And then in this case, it's going a long way for legal fees because I'm definitely now I'm gonna have to start take, get asked for some help for legal fees because that's what we got to do. So, um, so he's asking people to donate to this lawsuit, right? Anybody that has donated money to Miller after he has announced the lawsuit, I strongly suggest contacting YouTube, PayPal, Venmo, whoever, however you gave Miller money and report them to those companies. Report it, let YouTube know that he's running a scam, that he's defrauding the community. Um, because this is a con, okay? This, this is not a real thing, right? If it is, and I've already asked Miller to confirm this, that I want the name of the law firm, I want the name of the lawyer. Miller has refused to give that out. So he is scamming the community, right? Now, what's worse? Do you have a fake pastor who has a history of conning and scamming people? Or is it Phil who just begs for money and we laugh at him? for it right the difference between for me between phil and miller is the fact that miller's a career person at this whereas phil even though he's been doing the same shit for 15 years phil's an idiot right like people know they, they, they come and go they, they know that phil is pulling scams and everything like that right so but miller has done this to many communities he's admitted that he's done this to many communities so this is where the line needs to be drawn. Miller is a horrible human being, right? He's not a pastor. He fakes being a religious holy man. He's running a con on the detractor community. And it's now gone too far. I think the rumor so far is that he's made close to 200 bucks on the lawsuit. And I don't quote me on that. That's just what I've been told. So it's... It's very, very sketchy, right? And of course, it isn't real. So make sure that you contact YouTube, you contact PayPal, and you contact whoever else you use to give Miller money, and you report his ass. So my reason for doing this video is just to bring awareness to the community that Miller is a danger. He is a con man. He's an extortionist. He's a scam artist. He's done this many times in many different communities. And for us, Miller doesn't believe that people within this community are friends, people hang out all the time, and we look after each other. And we do, right? Like, it's been proven many, many times on many different channels about the camaraderie that we do in this community. Miller thought that he could come in. His MO, his MO was enter the community, get established, become prominent and then scam people which is what he tried to do and it didn't work so now he's burning it all to the ground scorched earth policy is what Miller likes to do when he's called out as being a fraud so this video is going to remain up so that people in the past present and future run-ins with Miller that find this video can know what occurred here and will know that he is not to be trusted. I want to thank everybody for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you want to sub to the channel, please do. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey everybody, Future Prophet here. I want to apologize here at, uh, I made a mistake within the video at 37 minutes and six seconds when I'm discussing the racism. I unfortunately listed Snort Hogan as African American. Uh, Septicron and everybody have been helping me out with this video here, and I want to apologize to Snort. Snort is Caucasian, but for whatever reason, Miller refers to him as a house stationary the entire time, alongside Duty, Chill, and Sly. So again, Snort, I'm I'm sorry, my friend, for making that misconception. Uh, Snort was somebody that I couldn't get a hold of during the video here. Uh, he was the only one, uh, but now it's been corrected. And again, I seriously want to apologize. Everybody, again, thank you for watching the video. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.